Hello everyone, this is Katie of 3 Mind Software, and today I'm going to be going over the basic tools of Otherworld Mapper to make a simple map. I'm going to create a new map, and I'll name it Tutorial, since that's what this is. And the first thing I'll do is choose how big I want my map to be. So I can choose from a preset size, as you can see here, or I can enter my own size, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make it 8 by 8, since I just want a small, simple map. Next thing, I'm going to set the map theme, which is this over here. And the map themes are basically the default settings for the canvas and the tools. These settings can be changed at any time, it's just what you're going to be starting out with. So I'm going to choose the pale theme and get started. And I'm going to close these tools really fast because we're not going to be using them for this. So I really want an ocean for my canvas because I'm going to be making more of an island map. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the canvas to something more oceany. So I'm going to change the preset and presets are saved properties that you can apply to just quickly change how things look. These are the ones that are already saved for the canvas for the pale theme. So I can click on one of these and it'll just change the background to that. You can save your own presets, which is this little save presets button here, which you'll see in all of the different properties for all of the different tools. But we're not going to be going into that in this video because this is just an overview. So now that I've got the canvas set up how I want it, I'm going to start placing land masses, which is this tool right here. And land masses are basically what you'll use to make continents or islands or anything of that nature. So the first thing is the toolbar up here. This will be what you're going to be using to draw any of your items. So this will have the different settings for what mode you're in, for what the pen's going to look like, any of those sort of things that you're going to do while you're drawing an item is going to be up here. That's where all those options are going to be. So I'm not going to change any of these for the time being. I want the fractal pen because I want my island to be more of a rough edge. So I want my first island to be in the middle of the map. So I'm going to go over to my mini map and I'm going to click onto the center. And that will center my view to the center of the map. And because I want my island in the middle to be fairly large, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So I'm going to click on the zoom tool here and right click to zoom out. I'm going to go back to my landmass tool and start drawing it. So I'm just going to left click somewhere and that'll place my first point and you can see the preview of the line and then I will just click again to start placing down the line for my landmass. And if you get a line that you don't want, that doesn't look right, you can hold shift and scroll your mouse wheel and it'll change what segment you're looking at. And in order to finish a landmass, you can either left click on the starting point in order to finish it, or you can just right click and I'll finish it automatically. So 
Now we have our landmass. I'm going to zoom back in to 100%. So this is my first island. It's not quite centered, so I'm going to click on the transform tool over here. And this tool will let you select an item and move it. And scale it. So if I wanted it to be bigger or smaller, I could do that. Also, let me rotate it. So I could go over to this little cog wheel and rotate the island some. So it'll be exactly how I want it. Now that I've got that done, I'm going to add another couple islands. So now we have our islands. There's one that has this weird little point that I don't really like. So I'm going to go to the Edit Shape tool and this you can select any item you want and it'll show you all the different points that make up that island. So I can move these points so that it's not as sharp or I can just go ahead and delete them. But this lets me edit my shape however I like. And then, so now we don't have quite as sharp of a point. Okay, now that I've got my islands how I want them, it's time to start putting in some details. So the next thing I'm going to add is some regions, which is here. These are the physical areas, so these are things like plains or swamps or deserts, things like that. So I'm going to add just a nice colored region. That's going to be kind of my grass. And as I said, anytime that you want to change how an item looks, you can simply select it. and change whatever it is. With some of these tools, like the regions, you can also follow the outline of other items. So if I wanted to fill in this bottom piece here, I could go over here and click to follow. Okay, now I'm going to add some lakes. This one going to be over here. I'm just going to Make this a nice little caldera. I don't really like how that looks. Use that one. Use that for all of them. Now I'm going to add some rivers.
Okay, now that I've got the lakes and rivers down, I'm going to start adding some features, which is this tool here. And these are basically bits of artwork that can be just about anything. It's going to be your miscellaneous tool for putting down points of interest or just forests or different things like that. I'm going to do some hills first, since this is a fairly small map. We'll put some hills down in this grassy region here. That's kind of big, so I'm going to go down and make them like 60%. And when you're placing features, you'll see there are different modes. So at the moment I'm on single mode, so at the moment if I click down, that place one single feature. So I'm just putting one down at a time. If I wanted to, I can switch to one of these three drag modes, which will place features down in different styles. So I'm going to just show you what some of these do. It's going to look really weird because there's going to be hills in the middle of the ocean. But so the tile will place them in just basic tile mode. Go away. Bricks. We'll put them offset of each other. And scatter mode we'll just place them kind of randomly. The other two modes are along a path. So if I click, each time I click, it's going to place a different feature. And I'll right click to finish. And this way you can have a line of features that's just one item. And you can move it as one thing and kind of arrange them like that. So, delete that. And then the last one is just a filled in shape. So I can draw just a general shape and it'll fill in that shape when I'm, when I'm done with whatever feature I've selected here. So at the moment, since I'm just placing hills, I'm going to go stick with single. All right, now that I've got all my features set down where I want them, I'm going to put some roads down. This is very hard to see. Sixty, please. There we go. Now I want some sea routes. All right. Now that I've got that done, I'm going to add the last few details going to add a label. Let's see, let's put it right here. For 
Mario map. We can change the font. And the size. Yeah, let's make it this color and give it an outline. And the outline will be that color, but darker. So I'm going to add a compass. Let's do this one. This one we do want at 100%. There we go. That. So I've got that. I'm going to add a shoreline here. So I'm going to, I do like the outline. I'm going to make it progressive fade, progressive dash. It does mean I'm going to make it a little thicker. A little pale. I think I'll take it off of the progressive fade. That works better when you're using a darker color. There we go. So now we have a little shoreline. Now we're going to add just a simple border. So not quite that simple. We'll do a double line. Do 20, I think, and just do a nice, like, orangey brown here. Okay, so now we've got a border around our map. And that's it, so I will save. And now I'm going to export this map to a PNG. So, tutorial, and this will be a PNG. So, save that. You can scale when you export to different sizes. I'm just going to leave it as 100%. So, now I have a nice PNG of the map that I made. And I'm done. And that's all for this video. I hope this was helpful to everyone. And thank you for watching.